graph number five, foreign exchange, um, or Forex for short. Uh, on the foreign exchange market, we are comparing uh, when two countries are trading, they have to use the other country's currency to buy their goods or to invest. Um, and so when that happens, there is a market for those currencies. Um, and that market will change the value of that currency. So it's a supply and demand market, like loanable funds and money market. Uh, so it works off the principles of supply and demand. So we have a price of that market. We're looking at the dollar market here. It could be any currency. All right. Uh, so there's a price, um, which is how many dollars, um, in this case dollars, it takes to buy a foreign currency. We'll say euros for lack of an example. All right. Uh, and then there is a quantity for that market as well. You have a supply, upward supply slope, because as prices increase, there's more people willing to trade at those higher prices, and a downward sloping demand, because as prices go up, we are, um, we'll hold on to our own currency because it's too expensive to trade. All right, where they intersect, we call the exchange rate. We use the symbol E for exchange rate. All right, um, very simply, how to remember what controls what line, because that's probably the hardest part of this graph is what line do I move? Um, supply, in this case of the dollar, is controlled by the United States um, and all of its citizens. It's a government, it's citizens, anybody that uses the dollar controls the supply of the dollar on the foreign exchange market. Demand, controlled by the rest of the world. Uh, we'll look at talk our way through an example here in a second. All right. Again, E, where they intersect, is the exchange rate, or price of the dollar. And again, how many dollars it takes to buy another country. When E is increasing, or the price of the dollar is increasing, we call that appreciation. When it's decreasing, we call that depreciation. Probably need to pause, because we're moving on here. On the back side, a few notes. All right, some things that influence the foreign exchange market. Interest rates. We will invest where the interest rate is the highest. So let's talk through an example real quick. If the interest rates in the United uh, Germany are higher than the United States, obviously I'm going to want to invest in Germany because I get a greater return on my money. To do so, I have to have euros. So I'm going to take my dollars and I'm going to drop them off on this imaginary exchange rate system and I'm going to take up some euros. All right. When I do that, I increase the supply of dollars on the market because I'm American and leaving in dollars there, I influence the supply. I take euros, being an American, I influence the demand for euros because I'm the rest of the world on the euro market. All right, so that causes the demand for euros to increase and appreciate the supply of dollars to increase and depreciates the dollar. All right, so we invest where it's highest. Price level, I'll buy where things are cheaper. So increasing price levels lead to a decrease in demand for their goods, which leads to a decrease in demand for that currency. GDP, higher GDPs, higher spending, both foreign and domestic, uh, and taste, where we like to buy stuff. German cars are nice. All right, how does this all tie to net exports? Well, higher exchange rates lead to more expensive currency and more expensive prices, so we buy less of them, net exports go down. Decreasing in, uh, exchange rates, it is now cheaper for foreigners to buy our stuff because it takes less of their currency to buy ours. Net exports go up. All right, that's it. Important stuff here.